All right, so let's tackle everything you need to know for AP Statistics Unit 1, starting off with the difference between categorical and quantitative data. Quantitative data just deals with numbers, so think quantity, numbers, that's stuff like heights, class size, population size, anything you put a number on, and categorical stuff that's like names and labels, so think like eye color, hair color, you can't put a number on that. Um, so we're going to branch off here and talk about categorical data, which you want to represent with a two-way table. Um, you've probably seen these before, but basically you have two variables on either side, and it just shows you like the cross or the um, intersections between certain variables. So as you see here, we have math students. Sure, we have 10 math students, but then we also have the internal and external uh, variables that split up the number of math students. So we have three math students who are internal, seven students are external, in the same case for English. Um, so the important thing you need to understand is a couple vocab terms that the AP might use in your um, teachers might use on your midterm is marginal relative frequency. That's a percentage of the data in a single row or column compared to the total. And if you look at this little chart here, that's going to look at uh, B over D or C over D. So we have our column total, which is just going to be C, C over D, and then our row total is B over D. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is a joint relative frequency. So that's a percentage of data in a single group compared to total. Um, so group here, that might be a little confusing, is just uh, we're going to look at A, right? So that's just a singular uh, variable or intersection that we're going to look at between a certain variable. So that's A over D. And if we look in our two-way table with actual variables, that's something like math internal. So that would be 3 over 23. Or maybe we want to look at external English. So that's look down English, external, so that's 9 over 23. Okay, so next we're going to talk about conditional relative frequencies. That's percentage of data in a single category when you're given a specific group. So now that we're going to be looking at A over B or A over C. Now that's something like just A, right? And then the total in the group or column is just going to be over A over C or A over B. And in our little two-way table, that's going to look like, let's say we're given that the student is in math, um, so that would be 10, so our total would be 10. And then we want to know what percentage of that is internal. Well, we have 3, so that would be 3 over 10 as an example for that part. Okay, so now let's go on to quantitative data. So for quantitative data, you want to know how to describe it. A big part of AP Stat is just interpreting because a lot of the calculations are pretty straightforward. You have a reference table, you can use your calculator, all that. Um, but you need to know how to interpret. So for quantitative data, use the acronym CSOX. Uh, the C stands for context, shape, or S stands for shape. So is it symmetrical? Is it skewed? Or number of peaks? Is it unimodal, bimodal, all that? Look at the outliers, right? Any variable, uh, any numbers or data points that are super out wide um, compared to the rest of the data. You have your center, right? So look at your mean or your median. Um, you have spread, right? That's range, your standard deviation, and your IQR. And then here's a little tip when you are describing the data is utilize a descriptive language, like strongly, roughly, like roughly symmetrical and all that. Um, and also use comparative language to maximize the number of points you can get on the exam. Okay, now let's go on to some basic terms you must know. I mean, you've probably seen these before. I mean, that's just the sum of all the values divided by the number of values, or the average. I mean, that's like the average value. Standard deviation is just a measure of variation. And here's an important part when you're describing it in context, okay? So you want to say like the value slash context, it typically varies by standard deviation value from the mean of mean. Okay, that sounds kind of weird, so let's look at the example. The average PrepWorks subscriber's IQ typically varies. So PrepWorks subscriber's IQ is the value slash context. Always put it in context. It uh, varies by 5 IQ points. So 5 IQ points varies by 5 IQ points. That's the standard deviation from the mean of 169 IQ points. The median is just the 50th percentile, so that's where if you have data, you organize it from least to greatest and then look at the value in between, right? You've probably heard of that. Um, and range is just the value, not the interval, the value of max minus min in your data set. Okay, so the last thing for exploring data in this part is how to make box plots. You need to know the five number summary. So the first number in the summary is your minimum. That's just the smallest value you have. Then you have the 25th percentile or Q1. That is just in between your minimum and median, right? It's the exact, it's like, it's pretty much like the median of your minimum point and 50th percentile, if that makes sense. 
And then the next number is your median or 50th percentile, then is Q3 or your 75th percentile, and then your maximum value. Okay, so the next thing is IQR. IQR is just Q3 minus Q1. And that's important because you also need to be able to describe specific outliers and their characteristics, that being low-end outliers or high-end outliers. So low-end outliers, uh, like the name suggests, is just a super, super low outlier. Um, so that's going to be any value less than Q1 minus 1.5 times the value of QR. And the same thing for high-end outliers, that's a super high outlier. That's any value greater than Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. So make sure you know those two equations. And here we just have a visual diagram because box plots are cool to draw. All right, so to round off AP stat unit one, we just have a couple more terms and then we'll get into normal distributions. Um, the first is officially defined percentile. We did talk about it, but how I think you should think about it is that it is the percentage of values that are less than or equal to a specific value. And then we also have cumulative relative frequency. So that shows the cumulative percentages from each interval up through all the data. And here, here we have a visual. So you can see here when we have a data point, that obviously is graphed. But when we don't have any data, that is just a straight plateau. And then when we get data again, oops, oh no, it's bugging. Okay, so if we get data again, then th that thing is going to go up because it's pretty much like a, I would say, a running total of the relative frequencies. And relative frequency is just like the chance of something occurring. Um, so that's like the occurrence or frequency over the total. Okay, so now let's talk about z-scores. So z-scores are tying back to the idea of standard deviations. Z-scores are simply the number of standard deviations. A value is away from the mean, and this is the official equation for it. It's whatever value you're looking for the z-score for minus the mean over the standard deviation. All right, so now we're going to talk about what happens when you transform data. Okay, so let's say you have a data set. What if you added a certain constant, like you added 5 to every single value, or maybe if you multiplied every value by 20, right? What would happen to the shape, the variability, and also the center? Well, here is a summary of what would happen. So if you added or subtracted all the data values by the same amount, the shape and variability will always stay the same. The center, so that's like your mean or median, will move up or down by that amount. Now, if you multiply or divide, that's a different story. The shape will still stay the same, but now your center and your variability uh, will be multiplied or divided by that amount. All right, so now let's talk about density curves and normal distribution. So a density curve is on or above the horizontal axis, has an area of one, and just shows probability distribution. Note that a normal distribution is a type of density curve, um, but no, when you talk about a uniform density curve, it's quite rare. You might see questions on this though, uh, but you can see pretty clearly that it has a, a total area of one. Um, but the more common, I guess, density curve you'll see is the normal distribution. You'll 100% see this, and you've probably seen this before. Um, so you need to know pretty much the standard deviation and the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So 68% of the values from the mean are within one standard deviation of the mean, sorry. 95% uh, of the values are within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the values are within three standard deviations of the mean. Um, so to solve normal distribution problems, you're just going to use your calculator. I mean, that is the most simple way to so know your calculator commands. Go and study those. So norm PDF, that finds a probability at a specific value. Norm CDF, that shows probability that the normally distributed variable is between a set interval, pretty similar to norm PDF. And then we have inverse normal, which pretty much does the reverse of these calculations. It finds a value that corresponds to a given percentile, where on your calculator, it might be denoted as quote-unquote area. Okay. All right, so the final thing we're going to talk about is super niche, but I'm still going to include it because it's on the CED. Um, that's a normal probability plot. So what it does is it plots the actual values versus the theoretical Z values. Okay, so these theoretical Z values are the Z values you would get if the actual data points were normally distributed. Okay, so it pretty much just shows you how well the data fits a normal distribution. And that's, you know, something you might see like that. Um, so basically, all you need to know is that if it's roughly linear when you plot this, or it might just give you the graph, it's gonna be roughly normal distribution. And if it's not linear, it's you know, roughly not a normal distribution. And yeah, that does it for everything you need to know for AP Statistics Unit 1.